Hiya. Welcome to Storytime with Miss Chadwick. I am Miss Chadwick, and today we have a very special guest. This is my friend Bear. Bear is going to be reading a story with us today that I am so excited to get to share with you. So before we get started, you are going to need a turn and talk partner. Remember, a turn and talk partner is someone that we turn to and share our thinking as we read the book. Your turn and talk partner could be someone in your family. It could be a stuffed animal like my friend Bear, or you can put your fingers like this into a phone and you can call and tell me. Take a second and find yourself a turn and talk. Now, I chose this book today, very special for my friend Bear, because this book is about making mistakes. My friend Bear has made a mistake in their drawing. Now, Bear, is it okay if I share the picture that you drew with my friends? Okay. So Bear was trying to draw a picture of a present and this is what Bear drew. And see the bow over here, it doesn't look quite right. And what Bear told me after they, when they had done this drawing, they were really upset that they were never ever going to draw again. Oh, that's sad. And so I picked this book today so that we could think about making mistakes and we could think about what happens when we make mistakes. The book we're going to read today is called The Girl Who Never Made Mistakes by Mark Pett and Gary Rubenstein, illustrated by Mark Pett. Now, as we read this book, we're going to pause every now and then, and we're going to make connections to the book. To make a connection means to think about how this book reminds you of yourself or your life or something that you've seen before. So we're gonna read this book, The Girl Who Never Made Mistakes. And then at the end, we're gonna, we're gonna give some advice to Bear. We're gonna think about what we would tell Bear after we've read this book about mistakes. Okay, let's get reading. The Girl Who Never Made Mistakes by Mark Pett. And Gary Rubenstein, illustrated by Mark Pett. For Beatrice Bottomwell, Friday began like any other day. She matched her socks, and of course, she put her shoes on the proper feet. She remembered to feed her hamster Humbert his favorite food, broccoli. And then she made, and when she made a sandwich for her brother Carl's lunch. She used exactly the same amount of peanut butter and jelly. When she stepped outside to greet her fans, she didn't forget to say thank you or good morning. They asked if she had made her bed. She had. They asked if she forgot to do her math homework. Nope. What about tonight's talent show, they asked. I'm ready, said Beatrice with a smile. After all, her juggling act had won three years in a row. Most people in town didn't even know Beatrice's name. They just called her the girl who never made mistakes. Because for as long as anyone could remember, she never did. Unlike Beatrice, Carl made lots of mistakes. He ate his crayons and he drew with his green beans. He played, he danced with his hands and played the piano with his feet. Carl loved to make mistakes. At school, Beatrice was on a cooking team with her two fr best friends, Millie and Sarah, to make their giant rhubarb muffins, they needed four eggs. Beatrice went to the refrigerator and carefully chose the biggest, eggiest eggs she could find. But on her way back, her legs slipped out from under her. The eggs went flying. Beatrice was about to make her first mistake. Mm. Let's pause right here, kindergartners. Think to yourself, what has happened in the story so far? Go ahead and talk to your turn and talk partner. Mm. Kindergartners, 
my turn and talk partner, Barry, told me that he remembered so far in the story, Beatrice never makes mistakes, but her brother does. And that lots of people are excited to see her do her juggling act tonight at the talent show. And that while she was baking, she almost, she slipped and fell and made her first mistake. <gasps> but she didn't. That was close, thought Beatrice. Sorry, Beatrice, I dropped a piece of rhubarb. Aunt Antoinette, Illy. For the rest of the day, for the rest of the school day, Beatrice could not stop thinking about her almost mistake. Mm, I notice in this picture that Beatrice sure looks sad. I can tell she's got a frown and her face looks worried. She doesn't look like she's having much fun. On her way home from school, Beatrice watched Sarah and Millie ice skating in the park. Come join us, said Millie. It's fun, said Sarah. Beatrice watched them slip and slide on the frozen pond. Sarah and Millie laughed as they wobbled on the ice. No thanks, said Beatrice. At supper, Beatrice barely touched her food. Is everything all right, kiddo? asked her father. I'm worried I'll mess up tonight, said Beatrice. And everyone will be watching. Worry? You don't make mistakes, he said with a smile. Beatrice? Tried to smile too. After supper, Beatrice got ready for the talent show. First, she woke Humbert up from his nap. Next, she got a salt shaker from the kitchen. And finally, she filled a balloon with water. The school auditorium was packed. Beatrice felt her stomach jumping around inside her. Beatrice waited for her juggling music to begin. That's her. That's the girl who never makes mistakes, said a woman. Oh, we know she'll be perfect, said a man. When the music started, she tossed Humber up into the air. Next, she added the salt shaker. Finally, the water balloon. Beatrice didn't miss a beat. The crowd clapped with delight, but Beatrice noticed something odd about the salt shaker. The specks falling out of it were not white. Hmm. Let's pause right here for a moment. What has happened so far in our story? Turn and talk to your partner. Mm -hmm. My friend Bear and some of my friends who called in were telling me that she didn't make a mistake with the eggs, but it made her feel really scared about making mistakes and that she didn't do fun things with her friends. And then at the talent show, she noticed something was wrong with her salt shaker. Humbert was so surprised by his sneeze that he grabbed the balloon with his claws. <gasps> Kablooey! Humbert, pieces of water balloon and pepper rained down on top of Beatrice. For the first time in as long as anyone could remember, Beatrice made a mistake and it was a big one. The music stopped. Beatrice didn't know what to do. Cry? Run off stage? The crowd sat stunned. They couldn't believe that the girl who never made mistakes had made a mistake. Beatrice looked up at Humbert. He looked back at her. The hamster fur was soaked and speckled with bits of balloon. Beatrice let out a giggle. The giggle grew into a chuckle and the chuckle became a laugh. The people in the crowd looked at each other and then back at Beatrice, they began to giggle, then chuckle, 
then finally roar with laughter. Beatrice and the audience laughed until they couldn't remember why they were laughing. Were laughing. That night, Beatrice slept better than she ever had. In the morning, no fans greeted Beatrice. Beatrice got dressed for no reason at all, put a soap, when Beatrice got dressed for no reason at all, put on a polka dot sock on one foot and a plaid sock on the other. Beatrice and Carl made sandwiches. This time they put peanut butter, they put peanut butter and jelly on the outside. They called it an inside out PB and J. Lunch was messy and delicious. Later, Beatrice found Millie and Sarah skating at the park. They fell a lot and laughed. People no longer call her the girl who never made mistakes. They just call her Beatrice. Mm, what a lovely story. Let's take a moment and think about the story. First, let's think about how Beatrice felt when she never made mistakes. Try and talk to your partner. How did Beatrice feel when she never made mistakes? Interesting. I heard some kindergartners call and tell me that Beatrice felt scared, that she felt sad, and that her stomach felt tight, and that she felt worried. Now let's think about how Beatrice feels at the end of the story. How does Beatrice feel after she makes mistakes? Turn and talk to your partner. Mm. Oh, interesting. I had some kindergartners tell me that she must have felt pretty good because she laughed and she slept really well. And then she laughed some more and she looks really happy in these pictures. Now, kindergartners. We said that Beatrice felt sad and scared and worried before she made mistakes, that she started to feel better after she started letting herself make mistakes. Why do you think that is? Why did Beatrice feel so scared and worried before she made mistakes and then started to feel better when she let herself start making mistakes? Turn and talk to your partner. Gardeners, I had someone call and tell me that they thought that Beatrice felt worried because she was so worried about making a mistake that she didn't, couldn't feel happy, that she didn't feel happy. And that after she started letting her make mistakes, she got to do the things she wanted to do and spent less time thinking about mistakes. I had another friend call to tell me that maybe she felt better because making mistakes was a lot easier than worrying and spending all this time thinking about not making mistakes. Now, kindergartners, why is it a good thing to make mistakes? Think about it. Turn and tell your partner. Oh, interesting. Kindergartners, I had one friend call and tell me that it's a good thing to make mistakes because mistakes are how you learn. I had another friend call and tell me that it's good to make mistakes because if you're making mistakes and doing your best work, that then you are doing your best work. If you're worried about not making mistakes, you're probably not doing much work at all. So kindergartners, let's think about Bear and Bear's picture. Bear told me after they drew the picture and the little bow looked wrong, 
that they were never going to draw again. What do you think you would tell Bear about making mistakes and his drawing with the bow? Colin, tell me, what would you tell Bear about his drawing and making mistakes? Kindergartners, I heard a lot of very good advice. Bear, this is what some of my friends told me. They told me that if you never drew again, you wouldn't be a very good drawer. And that it's okay to feel upset about making a mistake, but that it's important to, to try again. And I had a friend call and tell me that they hoped that you would that you would try again and make a new drawing. And that it would be okay if you made a mistake even then. Is that bear? Kindergartners, my friend Bear wanted me to tell you, thank you for giving him such kind advice and for using such nice words when you talk to him. Kindergartners, the last question I'm going to ask you before we go is I want you to think about when is a time that you have made a mistake and how did it make you feel? All right, kindergartners, thank you so much for sharing this time with me and my mystery guest, Bear. Next week, we will have a new mystery guest and a new story. I'm so looking forward to it. Bye, kindergartners.